to today's webinar. My name is Adam Golov, Marketing and Communications Manager at Data Conversion Laboratory, and I'll be your moderator today. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know we'll allow time at the end of the webinar for questions and answers. So please write your questions in the chat area if they come to mind. If we don't have time to answer them all, we'll, we will make them available on our website. Today, we would like to showcase APDS and DCL's relationship digitizing the officer training environment at the New York City Department of Correction Academy. In doing so, we will highlight the benefits of digital learning and demonstrate industry best practices if your agency is looking to make a similar transition. Now, before we get going, we want to start with a brief poll to get an idea who is listening. Which one of these statements most applies to you? I am here to learn about digitizing resources at my agency company. I represent the corrections department or other secure environment looking to introduce technology for staff or officer training. I work in a digital conversion and am exploring use cases. I work for a technology company and am exploring use cases. I am just curious or other. And we'll give it a couple more seconds. We have about two thirds of the attendees voting. And then we'll give it about 10 more seconds. Okay, so just to let everybody know, we had 31% say that they are here um, to learn about digitizing resources at an agency or company. 31% works for a technology company and they are exploring use cases. 31% are just curious or other. 8% represents a corrections department or other secure environment looking to introduce technology. for staff or officer training. A bit for Greg Fagan, who is the sales director for publishing and financial industries at DCL. Greg has over 25 years of experience in the publishing industry and has held key positions in production, editorial, and product development at major publishers and vendors such as Wiley, McGraw Hill, Elsevier, Silver Chair, and Alexander Street Press. Also, we would like to introduce Jenna Hammerslag, a marketing associate for APDS who supports B2B communication sales initiatives for the company's correctional educational technology system. Jenna's primary role at APDS is copywriter, project manager, and lead proposal writer for all federal, state, and local government contracts. She has spent the previous three years working in nonprofit and international development as a media and marketing coordinator and a grant writer. Jenna is a summa cum laude graduate from the University of California, Santa Cruz, with a BA in cultural anthropology. For those of you who are not familiar with DCL, we convert and organize content to create electronic documents, populate databases, publish on the web, and basically get it ready for tomorrow's technology. DCL services help you refine document conversion strategy, identify document redundancy, extract metadata, and transform legacy and future documents for real needs today and in the future. We serve a very broad client base across all industries. And Jenna will introduce APDS. All right, thanks, Adam. So as Adam said, I'm Jenna Hammerslag with APDS. Uh, so I'll get us started with a brief overview of our company. So APDS, or American Prison Data Systems, is a public benefits corporation and a certified B Corp, which means we're a business for social good. So our mission is to make corrections safer, less expensive, and more effective at reducing rates of recidivism. And we do that by leveraging technology to deliver secure access to a variety of educational, rehabilitative, and reentry programming uh, to inmates in prison and jail. So although our primary focus is delivering programming to inmates, we do offer correctional departments or other agencies in secure spaces, uh, mobile devices for officer training and professional development. So our solutions and tools are ultimately designed to improve safety for all constituencies, deliver significant cost savings to facility admin and taxpayers, and most importantly, create better outcomes by access to programs and support systems that are proven to reduce recidivism and increase operational efficiencies. 
So the APDS system consists of three components. Uh, so number one is our service delivery vehicle, which is an open uh, platform Android tablet. This is locked down, it's modified for corrections, and it's delivered in secure casing. This includes full mobile device management or MDM capabilities and 24-7 live agent monitoring. Second is our secure private network. So we provide a closed system. It's separate from the public internet with fully encrypted data and whitelist functionality, which basically allows us to restrict which content and tablet system settings are available to end users. We offer both Wi-Fi and cellular deployment models, um, each with their, own, with their own advantages. But third and most importantly, we provide a platform for programming. Uh, so we partner with a variety of best-in-class third-party content providers whose programs can be delivered at scale. So programmatic selection is uniquely customized for each agency or facility and its population needs. And what this really demonstrates about technology then is the magnitude of scalability and the flexibility that it affords previously restricted environments. Now, in, in addition to third-party selections, the APDS system includes a suite of proprietary tools and services uh, that are designed to increase operational efficiencies and amplify the impact that instructors have in the classroom. So for officer training and professional development tablets, we provide access to four key platforms. So first and foremost is our secure content locker or SCL. So this is our portal to deliver training materials in any file format. Our secure viewer allows recruits to highlight and annotate documents um, as well as export content. Then we have our proprietary learning management system or LMS. And this allows instructors to create interactive learning modules, uh, deliver quizzes, uh, assessments, and high stake testing. Uh, it provides automatic grading and result delivery, and it features a dashboard for tracking student progress. Now, another unique feature about digital learning in the LMS is that it allows the institution to deliver content which caters to different learning sty styles, uh, whether it be auditory, visual, kinesthetic, um, it can accommodate. Next, we have our secure messaging. Um, this provides secure log communication with department staff, which gives students quick and efficient access to support. And lastly, we uh, provide forms, a uh, digital form service, which gives agencies the ability to distribute and collect digital forms uh, from users, whether it's to gather feedback, make requests, or to file grievances. Uh, so that's a good summary of our company and our use of training and professional uh, development devices. So we can move on to our case study with DCL and the New York City Department of Correction. So our first and largest client utilizing our training tablet model was the New York City Department of Correction Academy. And they approached us with several unique challenges. So first off, uh, due to a hiring spike at several facilities on Rikers Island, which is the city's jail complex, uh, the DOC saw a 300% increase in the amount of recruits entering the training program, uh, with the cohorts ballooning from 300 to 1,000 between a single session. Now this singled a need for far more resources to support the growing class sizes. And secondly, at the time, training content was delivered in heavy, cumbersome binders with more than 2,000 pages per cadet. Binders were reprinted and redistributed to new cohorts every 16 weeks, and this presented the agency with monumental costs for maintaining a paper-based environment. This also meant that any changes or additions to existing content had to be reprinted and redistributed as well, um, which, as you can imagine, is a manual and time-consuming process. But beyond the time and resources dedicated to maintaining binders, the DOC was worried about the instructor and administrative capability to support manual grading and reporting processes. And lastly, there was a security concern. So there were a lot of recruits, which means a lot of sensitive documents floating around. So there was a secondary interest in providing not only more efficient access to DOC content, uh, but a more safe and secure way of doing so. So we knew right off the bat that APDS tablet functionality and the scalability they offered uh, could help the DOC achieve its goals. Uh, but to say goodbye to those binders once and for all required a significant collaboration with our digital conversion partner, DCL. Um, so their role was to work with our product and education support teams uh, to design and fully digitize the DOC training content uh, for delivery on our proprietary platforms. So I'll pass it off to Greg. Thanks, Jenna. So how did we meet the goals that Jenna identified um, in the previous slide? Um, well, we put our content structuring expertise to work, uh, first to analyze the content and the client's needs to determine the best format for integration into their proprietary learning management system. Uh, ultimately, we agreed that a SCORM compliance structure was the best fit, 
for those of you not familiar with it, SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. And it's simply a collection of standards and specifications for web-based e-learning. It defines the communications between the client-side content and the host system, which is commonly supported by a learning management system, as in this case. Um, we created a template for how to format and deliver the content, how to organize the files, how to chunk the text, et cetera. Um, we then converted a sampling of the content and tested it within APDS's LMS to ensure that it would perform according to the client's needs. Once that testing was complete, we converted the balance of the content and loaded that into the learning management system. Uh, this was truly a team effort that required very close collaboration. The APDS project team had to communicate to DCL how they wanted the training content to work within their LMS, and DCL needed to understand the LMS's underlying architecture before we could recommend the right contact format. We also needed to understand how the users, the NYDOC trainees, were going to interact with the content. And that's where APDS's expertise proved invaluable. All of this went into the requirements gathering phase, which, as you all know, is the bedrock of any successful project. Back over to you, Jenna. Great. Thank you, Greg. Um, so as you said, it was a highly collaborative and in detailed process. Let me get to the next slide for you all. Great. And so the project was a success. And in summer 2015, we trained our first DOC Academy cohort on APDS tablets. So all content is now fully digitized and delivered in the APDS LMS and SCL, which means secured content management is now available to the DOC Academy. Confidential and sensitive training materials are fully encrypted and stored at our secure data center. Moreover, our MDM features allow the DOC to remotely add and remove content, as well as shut down access to tablets instantaneously if a device is lost or during a security breach. And with that, we have increased operational efficiencies. So to begin, uh, digital content delivery uh, will eliminate the management and distribution of paper-based collateral. I say will uh, because the DOC is still in a transitory phase and using binders alongside tablets for a variety of reasons, uh, which I will cover in our best practices section coming up. But the important part is that content can now be amended and pushed to recruits on demand. And as soon as binders are phased out, the department will save thousands of dollars in materials, time, and resources. And secondly, the use of the APDS uh, LMS has automated several processes such as the grading of quizzes and assessments and the delivery of high stake testing. Uh, further, the LMS dashboard allows learners to track their progress. They can take quizzes any number of times and they can view the results instantly. Uh, students can even review the questions they missed and see the correct answers, which I think is a pretty cool feature. Um, but I think most importantly, the LMS now delivers interactive DOC courseware and adaptive instruction that not only caters to a variety of learning styles, but has proven, proven to help cadets better engage with content and prepare for assessments. Uh, so to continue, automated data collection and reporting capabilities have been a huge benefit to, to DOC Academy. So all user activity is tracked, and this can be exported for reporting purposes in any number of ways. So for example, APDS data analytics allow department admin to see which content cadets are interacting with, and they can amend instruction accordingly. That's just one example. Um, this also helps track and monitor group progress, uh, enabling instructors to see individual and overall group results throughout each training. Uh, but what is most fascinating as this, is that as a result, uh, tablets have actually created a culture of study and preparing. Um, and the idea here is that the easier or more accessible you make it for cadets to study, um, review, and track their progress, uh, the more likely they will be to integrate preparation into their training experience. And we saw a huge percentage, as much as 90% of recruits engaging with the LMS practice quizzes and interactive study materials. And this has been further evidenced by increased pass rates since tablet introduction. So although we don't have concrete longitudinal data yet, we're already seeing elevated pass rates as compared to cohorts that did not have access to digital resources. So just to highlight some of these numbers, um, we've trained uh, 3,600 recruits to date on tablets. That's close to 43 and a half thousand lessons that have been taken on the LMS, 29,000 practice quizzes, 14 and a half thousand workbooks completed, 3,600 high stake tests have been delivered. Again, we've seen a 90% recruit engagement with interactive content in our LMS. 
And most excitingly, we saw a 93% pass rate in 2017 alone um, from recruits utilizing tablets in the classroom. And not to mention, we digitized close to 2 million sheets of paper. Uh, so those are some pretty incredible results. So now moving on, uh, for those agencies, corrections or otherwise, uh, that want to incorporate managed technology into their day-to-day -day operations, we want to finish with some suggestions and best practices for doing so. So first off, we want to identify agency goals. So when making the transition to digital resources, be clear about what your agency's goals are in doing so. What are you trying to achieve and how will digitizing the training environment help you to get there? Um, next, support in designing content and key um, is key. And this is kind of the areas that Greg reviewed. So you want to make sure to identify your underlying objectives and work backwards to achieve. Um, what is most important for students to learn during training? And what type of questions do you want? And how do you want them to interact with the content? And companies like APDS and DCL work with their clients to identify goals and deliver content with a strong pedagogical base. Um, to elaborate here, you want to make interactive content clear, concise, um, as well as easily accessible to all reading levels and which is directly relevant to content learned in class or that is specifically linked to high stake testing. But beyond the content itself, uh, what is critical to recognize is that oftentimes the move to digital resources can be a slow change or a complete cultural shift. So in the case of the New York City Department of Correction, um, this was an agency that previously had limited access to or use of technology. And they were backed by a powerful union, which demonstrated a strong hesitation by key stakeholders. So first and foremost, this was a, included a resistance by instructors um, that were not comfortable with incorporating tablets in the classroom. And this was a major obstacle and is one um, agencies or departments might confront. Now, as previously mentioned, APDS decided that for the DOC, the best solution was to allow them to use binders alongside tablets as a means to transition slowly to digital resources. But the most important takeaway here is that teachers need to be comfortable with the technology to be effective in the classroom. And it just takes time to get me used to delivering content digitally. So it's important in that sense to be conscious and supportive of these challenges and scaffold that's needed during training and throughout the transition period, which leads to uh, perhaps the most important recommendation, uh, which is to achieve staff buy-in. So for sustainable and effective change to take place, Employees need to be happy with and supportive of digital resources. In turn, they'll be more likely to engage with the tablets correctly, and they'll have a greater impact on learners. Um, so with that said, instructors are actually only one side of the equation. So it's also important to be conscious of hesitant learners. And at the academy, we were dealing with recruits of all ages and levels of digital fluency. Um, so in this case, there was a prominent concern about the ease of control over digital content, such as the ability to take notes and annotate documents on the tablets. Because as you know, many people still prefer paper to screens. Now, I know we're not in the same room, but to drive this point home and to give you all a short break for my voice, we're going to pose one more live question to the audience. And that is, how many of you are currently taking or generally taking notes on your computer and how many on paper? Um, so, Adam, can you launch the poll? I just launched the poll, and right now we have it's about 50, 58% using technology and 40% using paper. Great. So that's uh, pretty similar to what we usually see. Um, we usually see about half and half. Um, that was our experience at the academy. Um, so a large part of training then was dedicated to getting students comfortable with device capabilities and teaching them that tablets, in fact, allow them to achieve much more than printed materials. Uh, for example, our secure viewer allows them to highlight passages, take physical notes, um, what else? They can add text boxes, they can jump directly to pages and search for keywords. And not to mention, for the first time, cadets won't have to carry heavy binders. And if you felt the weight of their bags and you commuted in New York City, then you'd agree that this was a feat in itself. Um, but overall, as emphasized with hesitant instructors, uh, be aware of these challenges and provide training and support as necessary. Now, there's no magic formula to getting every learner on the same page, but for those agencies with the limited use of technology, a training wheel approach always works best to achieve buy-in. So begin with a dual delivery mode and allow teachers and students to get comfortable. Um, once buy-in is achieved, then make a hard switch. 
because the digital learning environment and the fluency that comes with it are inevitable in today's world. And as long as we're cognizant of all constituencies while getting there, the positives will far outweigh the negatives. So to wrap all this up and tie it together, I'll leave you with a final summary about the importance of this specialized training and ongoing support with this type of work. So for APDS, we target around a 90-day window for tablet deployment. And this process varies, uh, but APDS conducts and recommends the following activities. So first, you want to establish agencies' roles, goals, and expectations. And next, you want to assess the connectivity needs. So do you want a Wi-Fi, a cellular, or a hybrid solution? Um, for officer training, APDS recommends cellular devices, since they're far less restrictive and they allow uh, cadets to access content from anywhere with the cellular signal. Next, you want to ensure content creation is rooted in strong pedagogy, uh, provide on-site staff and cohort training, um, and lastly, uh, lend ongoing user support, both technical um, and pedagogical. So now I'll pass it back to Greg for DCL's tips and tricks. Thanks, Jenna. And just to um, add to the best practices Jenna was outlining, uh, I would simply add that if digitizing all of your training content seems like an overwhelming task, uh, start with a small pilot project. Work with your vendors to scope out what you want to accomplish and how you want your content to work within your chosen system, and then build a small production version. Uh, doing this will help you identify potential roadblocks and to work out any kinks before you scale up. Oops, went one too far. Um, so ultimately, why go digital? Um, what are the tangible, measurable benefits of doing so? Uh, first, there's greater ease of use. Uh, not only is your content more accessible in the sense that users can get to it more easily, but there's also the opportunity to make it accessible from a 508 compliance standpoint. Given that you're going digital anyway, why not make it usable for people with disabilities? We recently gave a webinar explaining why making your content 508 compliant is a good idea, even if you're not mandated to do so. It's available in our webinar archive if you'd like to take a look at that uh, later on. Next, uh, paper and binders isn't very flexible or scalable. Uh, digital content is. Content reuse and repurposing come into play. When your training content is in a structured format, you can rechunk it, repackage it, combine it with other content sets, and pretty much do whatever you like with it. But updating your content becomes much easier. Rather than rekeying, reprinting, and redistributing paper documents, you update your content in the LMS or CMS where it lives and then publish it to your output of choice. Another great benefit is that you can incorporate audio, video, and other multimedia into your content. Assessment and feedback become possible, test scoring, targeted feedback, usage stats, etc. There's so much data that can be captured and reported. Um, and you can eliminate print and distribution costs, which, depending on the size of your program, can be pretty significant. I think of a project we did for Cisco a few years ago to bring their in-house training program online. They were printing and shipping materials across their locations around the globe. So the savings they realized by going digital amounted to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And finally, you may bring about world peace. I have no evidence to support this assertion, but I can't disprove it either. So why risk it? Just go digital. Do it for the children. And now Jenna and I will be happy to take your questions. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Greg, for this very informative webinar. Um, we have seven questions come in. The first one is, can APDF devices be used for entertainment purposes? Or how do you limit the distracting nature or use of tablets technology in the classroom? Um, so I'll take that one. That's a great question. Um, so what's important to communicate here is that these are lockdown learning devices um, that are restricted to our specified configurations. Um, so for example, APDS training devices are unable to download traditional applications, games, or to access external websites, um, whether it's social media or Google. Um, so the distracting nature of tablets are inaccessible to begin with. And this is something that we actually emphasize at all our deployments, is that tablets are tools for learning. Um, and this extends to our primary use case among inmates. So in the case of the DOC, correction officers learn, beginning in the academy, that tablets are not just pacifiers for entertainment, but instead they're 
functioning as a holistic solution to enhancing service delivery and improving inmate outcomes. Um, so that kind of sums up, at least for APDS, you know, these are locked down devices. Thank you, Jenna. Um, the next question is rather long, so please bear with me. Um, I am a big fan of tablets in education. I'm a former teacher. But I'd like to know your response to these arguments in favor of the pipe, paper binder. One, reliable foolproof. Two, lasting reference for later. For later. Three, students can read, reread, skip parts to suit their own needs, interests. And already mentioned number four, paper note taken. Yeah, Adam, do you mind repeating the first two? You kind of dropped out. Oh, sure. Uh, the first option was reliable, foolproof, and the second was lasting reference for later. Yeah. Okay, so all four of those, I would say, um, our tablets can accommodate, you know, except for in a use case where you, you lose the tablet or break the tablet. Um, in which, you know, we work to, to provide replacements as soon as possible. We can also um, make content available elsewhere um, through any web-based browser. As far as the note-taking goes, um, we do, uh, the tablets provide for several accommodations there. So, you know, learners can, again, highlight um, and take notes just as they would in physical documents. Um, learners receive uh, stylus pens where they can write as, as in a way that emulates pen on paper. Um, and keeping track of the content, um, you know, everything, again, is, is web-based and accessible from any browser. Um, also, in the way to kind of skip around as you'd like, the ability to jump to pages directly or keyword search is actually more effective than flipping through cumbersome binders. Um, and for those students that ultimately do want to use paper-based material, we offer the ability to export the content. They can print that um, and take notes or highlight as necessary if they'd like. So really tablets can, can um, when understood and, and taught how to use them properly, can accommodate for all of those concerns. Great, thank you, Jenna. The next question has come in is, are the tablets used along with instructor-led classes? Well, all of this is ultimately up to the department or agency um, when we, when we do the needs assessment and we help design the content and how it's delivered. They can certainly be used side by side in instruction. Um, and a lot of our use cases, they're often to accommodate lessons learned in class. So teachers can assign and deliver um, courseware. Uh, students can submit on there. They can deliver testing in class. So, or if they want to, for example, we had a lot of students in a juvenile facility where the teacher enjoyed um, being able to deliver interactive content during a lesson. So they could say, go to your tablets and, you know, watch this video, you know, or, you know, run a poll in class. So really the options are, are endless. So that's something that with each individual client, we assess what they want to accomplish in the classroom and what the best solution is when integrating tablets there. Great. Thank you, Jenna. The next question has come in is, how else can we support struggling or hesitant learners in the classroom? So without getting, I guess, too technical or stepping outside my, my knowledge base of expertise, and at least in staying with that tra uh, training environment, that specialized training is really key at deployment. So what's important first is that on-site tra on training. So we provide each class with an extensive um, technical training session where we brief them on tablet use, we demonstrate all the tools available to them, and we provide them with support manuals. And next, we leave staff in place during business hours for the first two weeks of each cohort training. So this allows learners to get any questions or concerns answered um, and basically become comfortable with the devices before we transition to remote support, which is available to staff and students 24 seven. Um, so that'd be my recommendation at a high level. Great, thank you, Jenna. The next question has come in is, what is the viewing app on the tablet that is used to read, annotate, or play the content? So for APDS, we have our proprietary secure content locker. So that is an application um, built by APDS that uh, accommodates over 30 file formats, I believe. 
Um, and that is where for the DOC Academy, we uploaded all of their training materials and workbooks. Thank you, Jenna. The next question has come in is, we are concerned about ease of use for written responses on mobile devices. What is the best way, we, best way to accommodate this on tablets? Okay, lots of questions here. So um, the difficulty using the tablet's keyboard or input there is a common concern. And so we have a few options to alleviate that. So as I mentioned in an earlier question, um, cadets receive a stylus pen. And that allows for written notes directly on the tablet screen and whether that's within the content or the workbooks themselves or even in a blank digital word document um, during class so this is a popular option for those learners that want to really emulate pen on paper um, we're also beginning to offer our clients detachable keyboards um, and that's used specific for but we'd like to make this option um, available to accommodate any typing or input difficulties uh, for written assignments or for testing purposes so those are a few ways um, we work with our clients to alleviate those concerns if, if they are one for your agency. Great, thank you, Jenna. And the last question has come in is, what kind of audio and video is integrated with the training content? You wanna take that one, Greg, or? Well, I don't know. I don't know specifically what uh, NYDOC is using, um, but um, any kind of file, um, you know, if you have a learning management system or a content management system, and the content is tagged uh, to be SCORM compliant or or it be it XML in some sort of DITA learning and training format, um, then it's already set up to accept. You know, WAV files, MP3 files, or whatever files you may may have. So you may have demonstrations in video that um, are necessary for the students uh, that are using or the trainees that are using the content. Uh, there may be podcasts or, or audio files you want to incorporate. Uh, all of them are possible. Um, as far as specifically what NYDOC was using, um, uh, that I'm not sure about. Yeah, I mean, in, in my only, again, this is outside of my technical expertise, um, but that would just be in our SCL, as I had answered before. Um, we can accommodate any any audio um, or MP3 file uh, and add that into our either LMS or our secure content locker. Great. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jenna. One last question has come in is, why did you go with SCORM? As as opposed to DITA or another form of XML? I can take that one, uh, Jenna. Um, so the, the, the answer is actually uh, pretty easy. It's because uh, APDS's LMS was already set up to be SCORM compliant. Um, so that was the most logical choice. We looked at whether doing a DITA model, uh, perhaps learning and training, or just even vanilla DITA, uh, would improve um, the content in any way, and we came to the conclusion that it wouldn't, that SCORM was the best fit. Um, going to DITA in this case would have involved um, far too much reworking of the content and how it was authored and, and um, assembled, so it, it just didn't make sense in this case. SCORM was the best fit. Great. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Jenna, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. This will conclude today's broadcast. You'll be able to access the recorded version of this webinar from the webinar archive section of our website. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and have a great day.